Hello, yes, British nationalism can still win. That's right. We keep hearing all the time that it's too late, it's over. Nick Griffin's now buggered off with his 100 year quest of Reconquista. Who signed up to the 100 year quest? Exactly, it's that stupid. I'm surprised that he's even tried to sell it to um, the nationalist community around the world. The 100 year quest, that's what it's going to take, according to Nick Griffin. Who would sign up to something like that? You, you would, it's so defeatist. How many have already signed up in the sense that they're now partnered off having all these children? Well, exactly. It's that stupid. But anyway, British nationalism can still win. Let me put this to you. Say British nationalism. Not had one MP in Westminster, but half a dozen. Half a dozen. Those around them, the sellouts and the careerists and all the rest of the rabble, they could not survive among six British Nationalist MPs speaking the truth. The public would also see what was happening. They would see that British Nationalism does indeed have the answers to sort this pr country's problems out. They would see that overnight. In fact, so would the ethnics. The ethnics would understand that we're on their side as we are the people of this country, the indigenous people, right? We want to put this country right. And we want to help everyone, all of them. And let's put this right so we all benefit. Trust me, we would have a large section of the ethnics, if not the majority of them, behind us overnight, as we would the British people. Because those in power couldn't survive amongst six British Nationalist MPs speaking the truth. Right? They couldn't, and the public would see that as well. The public would see it overnight. There would be a change of mind, or a change of heart, let's say. A change of heart and mind overnight. There literally would be. Right? If you just had six MPs amongst them all. Right? That's what would happen. We would seal it, without a doubt. Just the sheer force of opinion would uh, carry us to victory. Trust me, it would. And don't anyone tell me we can't get MPs elected face past the post. We can, right? Look at Mick Treacy and Nick Griffin and uh, Oldham 2001. Saddleworth Moore, was it? I can't remember now, anyway. Um, Griffin, I think, polled 16.5%, was it? I think Mick Treacy, 15 or so, 15.5%. Now, had we stayed on track and campaigned in Oldham and everywhere else around the country, we would have made further inroads. Sadly, we weren't in possession of the modus operandi of the secret state and its two criminal proxies, Nick Lowell's Hope Not Hate, Jerry Gable's Sageland Magazine. We weren't in possession of the modus operandi. Unlike now, where Joe Owens has cracked the code, we know the modus operandi of Hope Not Hate Nick Lowell's Jerry Gable's Taylor Magazine. Had we known back then, the BMP would still be intact and riding high. It would be where UKIP was not too long ago, a year ago or so, right? We would have been there. In fact, UKIP wouldn't have scaled to the heights it did had British nationalism stayed on track. It's not all over. Far from it. It's nonsense. Utter, utter nonsense. That's all we need is a handful in that Westminster and it's game over. We don't need hundreds because we will, I won't say force, but I'll use that word. We will force a change of opinion. How people see them, you know, understand things overnight just by watching those six nationalist MPs in Westminster, or even one or two, the, the rest of the shower couldn't survive amongst the truth. You know they couldn't, so don't rule us out that we're finished and we're writ off. We're not. The ethnics will be behind us once we start speaking the truth, because it's in their interest to get behind us. But first of all, we've got to straighten ourselves out, haven't we? We've got to get British nationalism back up there, back up and running, which we will. We will do that. Trust me, we will. Okay, thank you.